Dr. Francis Adishola. Dr. Francis Adishola is the senior pastor at Redemption Family Church, Ibadan. He is the founder of Christian Information Network Ministry, a multifaceted Christian organization aimed at meeting the total needs of man, that is, a holistic transformation which touches spiritual, social, and economic well-being of the targeted groups. Pastor Francis is a certified counseling psychologist who majors in marriage and family life therapy. Okay. Well, because of time, I don't know what my, I can't, I mean, to show my face, it's not been a problem, but if you can hear me, let me just go ahead. Is that all right? So, and I want to thank um, uh, our, our mommy, um, Ms. Lissun Basharun, for this invitation. I'll be speaking in this um, breakout session on um, fostering mental well-being by implementing CBT interventions in Facebook settings for parents, children, and teenage ministers. Um, by introduction, Francis Adeshala is my name. I'm a counseling psychologist, as well as a pastor for over 30 years. And because I started my Christian journey as a teenager, uh, almost 50 years ago, uh, that has um, equipped me over the years to be involved in teens and youth ministry up to date. And when we talk about mental well-being, many other times the church do not have adequate plan to educate people when it comes to the issue of mental well-being. If you look at uh, just for foundational setting, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, we are counseled that um, we should not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Renewal of mind is as very important as renewal of the spirit, which leads us to being born again. Renewal of mind is a continuous exercising our mind in the right direction in order to keep our mind healthy and by uh, that to be um, to be well to be sound in our mind if you look at a story in Luke chapter 15 verse 8 that Luke chapter 15 there are two stories there Jesus Christ was giving and two illustration about the lost sheep and the lost coin the lost sheep it says the man left the rest in the, in, the, in the house and went ahead to look for the one that is lost. That is like a story of uh, a sinner that is lost in the world, that a church should leave the 99 and go out to pursue the one that is lost in the world. That is to get souls you know, converted. But the second story in that um, Luke chapter 15 verse 8 is the story of the lost coin. And if you look at the lost coin, the lost coin is lost inside the house, not outside the house. And that is more like the state of the church today, that there are people that are in the house, house of God, but yet they are not well discipled. They are unattended to. And by that, they are lost. And if you see what happened, said the woman took broom, swept everywhere, every corner until the lost coin was found and of course he invited people come and rejoice with me that my coin that was lost is found and i believe that um, this program this conference with the title impact discipleship for impact is well um, structured this year to help people who are lost in the midst of the church in the midst of the family because many people are not attended to. And that's why the issue of um, mental well-being is very, very important. We all know that uh, Harry and Meghan, that is Prince Harry, came to the country about two weeks ago. And uh, Prince Harry was uh, an advocate of mental well-being. He said something when he came to Nigeria, just trying to lay foundation before I go into the slide. 
Now, he said, uh, and I quote, he said, every single person in this room, the youngest, the oldest, every single person has mental health. So therefore, you have to look for, look after yourself to be able to look after other people. Ari said that there is no shame to acknowledge it. Now, talking to parents and um, teenage ministers, people in the youth ministry, I believe that talking about where mental well-being should start even with us, because if we are not well, we will not be able to help others. We will not be able to help the young people we want to help to disciple so that they will be able to make impact. And that's why I'm talking about well-being. Don't let us be looking at the young people outside there that we feel that want to help, but let us help ourselves first. Because there are so many things that can lead to mental uh, breakdown. Like uh, Harry said, he said when the mother died, maybe she was at the age of 16, 12 or 16, then I can't you know, quote correctly now. Now she, I'm sorry, he entered into mental depression to the extent that they now went into drinking and smoking until uh, he met Megan. And it was Megan that advised him to go and see counselor, to seek you know, uh, you know, therapy. And today is a better person going around the world. And there are a lot of our young people today that are into substance abuse. And what led to some of these things we are condemning the Gen Zs and the Gen Alpha, you know, on today is as a result of prayer, depression, things that are happening with, you know, to them. Church is not adequately, adequately catering for them. Even the family, you know, parents are not, you know, there to sustain them. And even teachers, either in the, in the, in the public schools or teachers in the church, they are not well equipped. So we'll be looking at this slide. Um, the size next slide there, you see, it says this presentation explore implementing uh, CBT, which is cognitive based therapy intervention in face based settings to foster mental well being for parents, children, and teenage ministers. It discusses the integration of cognitive behavioral therapy in religious environments. Now, you see, bringing academics into uh, faith space to Christian space now, uh, because they are interwoven. We are talking about a renewal of mind, and it has to do with information before our cognitive uh, attitude could be changed, before we can have a right behavior uh, in a society, starting from one individual lives, before you talk about being useful in the society. You can see what is going on in the mind of people, anxiety, stress, chaos, panic, and so on and so forth. What is mental health? And what does CBT implies? Mental health is a state of well-being encompassing emotional, psychological, and social aspects of, aspects of functioning. CBT is psychotherapy focusing on changing negative patterns by altering thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. We always say that behaviors are learned, and it can be unlearned. That is, whatever behavior anybody put in place today, you learn it, learn it in one way or the other. Just like we say that um, a child that is born, you know, uh, what we call uh, a tabula rasa, you know, uh, is that um, it comes with a very plain, uh, a clean slate. That is, the mind is clean. But the exposure of that child to the environment, in the family, immediate environment, in the society, begins to inscribe things upon the heart of such a child that form the kind of behavior and the attitude such a child begins you know, to demonstrate. And But we are saying that if we understand that we can also change our pattern of life, can change our behavior if we have a right uh, orientation, which has to do with um, changing our cognitive uh, 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 you know, attitude to life, seeing things in a new perspective. Of course, as Christians, we must see things you know, from the uh, biblical worldview, which can help us you know, to change our attitude 
and to change you know, uh, our behavior. Faith-based settings and mental health. There are potential for the integration of CBT into faith-based settings. Religious teachings hold significance for supporting mental health and well-being, discussing the unique challenges and opportunities in implementing CBT in religious environments. As a counseling psychologist, um, whenever I counsel people, you know, from different places, from different backgrounds, whether, you know, from workplace or family matters or individual, you know, mental stress uh, or depression, I always tell them that, well, after looking at um, the therapies and looking at um, um, all the cycle, uh, uh, the, the psychological issues that could be addressed from the books, I always end up that there is God's factor. God's factor is the, the Bible, what God has said in his word that can accelerate solution. So I believe that as, as Christians, um, Christian parents and of course leaders, to help the younger generation, the place of the scriptures, what the Bible says about mental well-being is very, very crucial to help teenagers and um, of course, and their mental health. Mental health is vital for teenagers as it impacts academic performance, social relationships, and future success. It fosters emotional resilience, coping skills, and elder decision-making, crucial during the turbulent adolescent years, laying the foundation for lifelong well-being. Now, you see that um, the formative stage of, uh, of a child, uh, especially when it's you know, stepping into uh, a teenage uh, stage of life is very, very crucial. And of course, if there is nobody to help young people to discover who they are and um, what is ahead of them and help them listen to them and uh, to see that some of the things that we call uh, uh, stress, they are part of life. Of course, it's a turbulent years of which we have to help them to understand, you know, the emotional resilience, how they can um, coping skills, and to make healthy decision at that stage of their life, which is very, very uh, crucial. Now, you see, teenagers and mental health, I say that, um, um, sorry, that young people's mental health assessment, how do we know? Because the issue is, how do we help these young people? How do we find out whether they are having mental challenges or not? Now, what you see in such a uh, situation is the assessment is number one, mood changes. If you study them, frequent shifts in emotions such as irritability, sadness, and sudden outburst. If you notice this uh, among your uh, children or in your uh, the children you are, are taking care of in the church as a Sunday school teacher or a teenage minister or as a teacher in the school, let us watch out and see all these mood changes, changes in behavior. What a child is not doing before you begin to notice noticeable alterations in usual activities, social interactions, because at that time when you see a child that begin to withdraw, no one to be on his own, uh, you know? And of course, you also uh, see this assessment of the states of the mental health of such a child in academic performance. What of physical symptoms? You can see running headaches, it's always not feeling well, stomach aches, fatigue without underlying medical causes. Some of these things may, may seem to not be able to explain it, but you discover that they are uh, the kind of um, uh, uh, impact upon the, 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 the mind of such a child can lead to all these physical symptoms. I've talked about withdrawal avoidance of social activities, spending excessive time alone, or isolating oneself from friends and family. So if you see, I say, well, uh, look, look, leave him alone. He always wants to stay in his room. Now, parents will just say, well, he's a quiet one. He wants to stay in his room. You don't know what is passing through the mind of such a child. And of course, if we are not, um, if you are not careful enough to find out, it may slip into depression and more challenges relating to mental health. Sleep dis disturbances. You know, difficult falling to sleep, staying asleep, or experiencing frequent nightmares, substance use. By that time, you know, those that are becoming teenage going to youth, you can see experimentation or increasing use of drugs. 
Somebody will introduce this. Somebody also is depressed mentally. We introduce all these things because you are, we are not there uh, to support, to give them the kind of a support, to listen to them. Of course, they will listen to all outsiders and because they want to uh, uh, a, a kind of a solution and whatever is introduced to them by their peers, they, uh, they end up you know, submitting to such. And that's why we have substance uh, abuse as a coping me mechanism. What if changes in appetite, significant weight loss or gain? Now, these are the things we must assess, we must look out for, irregular eating patterns. Now, you know, these are the things we just wave off, you know, and just say, well, he eats too much. Do you know why he eats too much? Oh, yeah, he doesn't eat, he has lost appetite. These are the uh, uh, assessments to look at your words, whether they have been impacted negatively or their mental health is, uh, 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 is, is having a kind of a setback in the mental uh, uh, life, that is, which has to do with their mind. What of academic struggles? You know, decline in grades. What of self-esteem issues? Persisting feelings worthless, low self-confidence or self-criticism, you know, blaming themselves from time to time. Anyway, you can say, don't blame yourself. Don't worry. This is about this thing is more than just uh, uh, giving advice. And that's why I say the place of counseling is very, very important. Unfortunately, even in our schools today, counselors have been reduced to, you know, classroom teachers. And of which that there is no, in those days, uh, you have a room, we call it, you know, a, a counseling room where you have someone who is 100% a counselor looking out for children, you know, that are, that, that, that are suffering some of these uh, uh, things that we're talking about, or teachers noticing and sending them to counselor, you know, to help them out. Physical complaints, frequent complaints of unexplained physical ailments, despite medical reassurance. So these are the things we begin to see um, when we are talking about uh, mental health. Helping young people guard against mental health, and of course that's the essence of this conference, encourage open communication. How do we help them? We must encourage open communication. Let this start from the parents. Allow your children to talk. Give them an opportunity, you know, to speak out. Even when they are not speaking, uh, you know, in line, see, allow them to express their mind. We must foster a supportive environment where things feel comfortable, discussing their thoughts and feeling without judgment. You are not going to be there as parents or as teachers or maybe as a pastor, um, you know, teenage you know, uh, minister, and you are there to just say, you talk too much. What's wrong with you? Hey, you see, you are this, you are that. Because if you want to speak, you don't allow such a person to express uh, him or herself. Now, we are not helping the mental health of such uh, young ones. Promote healthy habits. Emphasize the importance of regular exercise, you know, balanced nutrition, adequate sleep, and uh, limiting screen time to support overall well being. You know, many a time, some of our young people from teenage, they have their own uh, Android phone and they are there to watch this, to watch that, to watch this. And through this, now so many things begin to play in their mind that will affect you know, their, 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 I mean, their, their sleep, that will affect their concentration. So we must help them teach coping skills, equip things with effective strategies for managing stress, such as deep breathing. These are the things, deep breathing, mindfulness, and problem solving techniques. Some of these things we have you know, to uh, guard against, you know, mental health when they are that when they are exposed to all this knowledge, it will help them to be sane in their mind. And of course, their mental health will be well guarded. Provide a safe space, create opportunities for things to express themselves creatively through heart. Now, you see, if you go abroad, I was talking something, I said the parents in our country you know, uh, even to take your child, your teenage that you're supposed to expose to music department in the church or to the media department because of their knowledge, you know, in the computer and uh, in IT. Now we don't have to, we don't have the time to take them to church, you know, for choir practice. We say no, I don't have the time. But if you are in America or of any of the advanced country, you can try it because you see parents. I know I see them, you know, working themselves out. Either mommy has to take them for swimming, you know, to learn swimming or take them out for dancing or to take them out for one thing or the other, whatever they're interested in, you know, 
apart from academics, it is something that is compulsory because they know that if you don't do this, and of course, when they are discussing with their peers in the school, oh, I've gone for swimming, I can do this, I've come for you know, to play table tennis, I've gone for dancing and things like that. Now, it's going to uh, impact, impact on, their, on their mental health. So you see parents doing all these things over there despite their very tight schedule. But you know, in other parts of the world, like Africa, we just feel that all oh, this is not important. Just read your book. Go, have you done your own work? That is all that we have to say. We are not helping them to create opportunity for teenagers to express themselves creatively through art. Writing or music allow them to process emotions in constructive ways. These are the ways we can uh, guard against our uh, health issues. Now, you see, foster positive relationships, encourage healthy friendships. Now, you must know your friends, I mean, the friends of your children. They may be teenagers, you know, so you can, you can invite your friend, you know, to come at the weekend and be able to talk to the parents. Ah, my daughter, my son said, Susan, and so they are friends in the school. Can we, can we visit? Can you, can you also visit us? With all this, you are helping your children, you know, the young ones to be sane, you know, content. Now, these are the things we have to educate our children that that's why they have access to Android because they say, well, I'm using it for my homework. I'm using it for this and that, right? I was, uh, uh, you know, Bill Gates sometimes, I was reading from Bill Gates. Bill Gates, those are the people that are, you know, if you know, behind IT. Bill Gates said he never allowed his children to have a phone until they are 14 years of age. That these children, they never had access to telephone until 14, uh, you know, and the Android phone until they are 14. Now, you know, that is the people we think that, all right, this is, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's their world, it's this and that. And because of that, even if they have all these things, we must educate them to know that there are some things we call harmful uh, exposures. We must tell them so that by discipline, which is the essence of discipleship, they will not go into look, look into such content. Model self-care, lead by example by prioritizing your own mental health and demonstrating early coping mechanism in your daily life. Even as parents, as teachers, we must leave example. We must be aware of how to bust against your husband, against your wife, you know, making noise and, uh, you know, expressing anger. Because when you are doing this, this is modeling. You are modeling, you are saying, this is the way, you know, to, to, uh, you know, to be. This is the way to be. I remember one of the um, salt and light camp uh, that I came, you know, to speak to. Uh, the young people that are involved, you know, in the, in drug, um, you know, smoking or drug abuse. Uh, I think I was I was telling them. I said, I I mean that one of the challenges of these young people started right from their home. When you have, you know, a, a sitting room and you have a bar in your sitting room, and the parents will go, you take alcohol, you drink. Oh, Junior, how are you today? How is your school? And you are going to the bar to take, you know, a sip of a uh, 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 of alcoholic drink. You know, you have put bar in your sitting room. You are you are already setting these children in the path or uh, on the wrong path. That okay, when you grow up, what I'm doing, you must begin to do it. And before you know, before they get to that, that from their teenage, they begin to look for a way. What is daddy enjoying from that cup? What is mommy enjoying from that? You know, from that you know cup. They want to have a taste of it, and that's how many of them you know got you know um, caught in the web of uh, 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 of drug addiction. We must seek professional help when needed. Be proactive in addressing mental health. There is nothing to be ashamed of by what Harry said. If you are suffering even from mental health, talk to someone. You know, talk to somebody. Somebody was talking to me two days ago. He's a PhD you know, student in the University of Ibadan. And uh, the woman was talking, 40 years old, was trying to share, you know, some of the things, you know, uh, uh, the family setting that she has not opened up to tell people. And having to sit uh, to listen to him for one and a half hours before I begin, you know, uh, to, to say one or two things. Now, when you, when you, when you, when you allow people to open up, it helps you to, uh, uh, I mean, to solve the, the, the problem, to know what is going on and the intervention from counseling perspective, you know, uh, 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 you know, or therapy perspective is going to help uh, guard against mental health or health or breakdown or further thing that can lead to depression. So let's seek for professionals. There is not, when you are sick bodily, you look for a doctor. 
when you know that you begin to have sleepless night, there are a lot of thoughts running up your mind. There are some challenges that is causing depression. Let's seek for professionals. Validate their experiences. Let your children, everything they are doing be validated. Acknowledge and validate things, feelings, and experiences. Let them know that, yes, it is real, but there is a way out. Let them know that, there, that it's okay to seek help when they are struggling. Let them know that, look, if you, if you are not a bad person because you are feeling this way, now, if you talk to the parents, you talk to people that can be of help, through that, they will be radically uh, encourage balance, encourage things to find balance between academics, extracurricular activities, and downtime, helping to reduce feeling and overwhelm uh, burnout. I've said that, that academics is good. There must also be balance with uh, extracurricular activities. We're almost there. Parenting style for Gen Z in fostering mental health. Now, the Gen Z uh, age we have, how we can, the parents can help embrace open communication. I've talked about that. Foster an environment where things feel comfortable, expressing their thoughts and emotions without fear of judgment. You are not going to say, ah, you are just that, why you do that? You know, we just shout at them when they are trying to open up or the parents are not even there. They say, okay, well, I will listen to you tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. The tomorrow is going to be tomorrow on the, such a child. Uh, a pain or, ad, uh, or youth begin to look for a solution outside. Promote autonomy, encourage independence and decision-making skills while providing guidance and support when needed. Not everything you want to do, do it this way, do that. That's why guidance is good, but allow them that what do you think you want to do in this instance. Give them opportunity to make choices. And it's okay, oh, what, are, what do you think in this decision? I mean, in this instance, what you are going to do? You will say, oh, mommy or daddy, I think I should do this, or uncle, I should do this and this and this. And from that, you don't condemn their thoughts. But at the same time, what you know, you feel can help them, you know, to do better, you will be able to uh, discuss about the established boundaries, set clear and consistent boundaries to create a sense of security and structure from things. Let them know that this is the boundary you can't go far to this side, far to this side, uh, to the left or the right, you know, in order to do better. You must prioritize emotional intelligence. Teach things to recognize and manage their emotions effectively. Forcing resi I mean, resilience and coping skills. That is what emotional intelligence is. Not everything that comes your way you react to. And let all the other, let it start from us. It's not everything you complain about. It's not anything you fight, you know, uh, you know uh, 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 for. Now, these are the things that whatever comes your way, you know how to balance up, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, emotionally. These are the things that parents must have to use as tools to help these, our generation, which we call the Gen Z, even the generation alpha that is coming, um, which if we don't care, they are more volatile than the Gen Zs we are talking about. Encourage self-care, emphasize the importance of self-care practices such as exercise, relaxation, hobbies to support mental well-being. Model healthy behaviors. Serve as a positive role model by demonstrating healthy coping mechanism, communication skills, and self-care habits. Now, you want to work out, why don't you allow your children on the street, let's work out. Let's work out. And of course, through that, they will appreciate what it means to exercise the body. Provide support networks. Help things build strong support networks with friends, family, and mental health professionals. Let them be exposed to good counselors, whether in the church or in the school or in the environment that you say, look, you can talk to Uncle so and so to Auntie so and so Now, whatever is going on now, allow them to talk to professionals if need be, because there are some things they may not want to talk to parents immediately. They want to talk to outsiders. And by the time the counselor calls the parents, you know, to share what uh, they are hearing from the, uh, from the child. You are not going to pounce on them and begin to condemn them. You'll be able to work with the professionals, you know, counselors to help these young ones. Um, foster a growth mindset. Encourage a mindset focused on learning, growth, and resilience rather than uh, perfectionism or fixed notions of success. You don't begin to say that, well, I, I behave like a perfectionist before the young people. No. Even... Uh, at home, we must not allow such uh, things to be so that our children will be able to know that they can make mistakes. And when they make mistakes, of course, their mistakes can be corrected. Celebrate individually. Embrace and celebrate things' unique strength. When they are doing something, let them, let, let them reinforce 
that particular uh, behavior, reinforce that particular, you know, attitude. Let them know that, yes, you are doing well. This is what, that's my son. Oh, oh, Lord, I'm proud of you. Embrace and celebrate things, unique strengths, interests, and identities, promoting self-acceptance and self-confidence. When we see things that we need to reinforce, you know, so that they can do it again and again, let's talk about it. Let us, let us, let us praise them. We are needed. Uh, we are necessary. Seek professional help when needed. Be proactive in addressing mental health. That is, when you seek some things, see some things as teachers or people that are taking care of teenage, wherever either in the church or even as parents, you may need the guidance of professionals to help so that you'll be able to know how to handle the young ones better. CBT and young people's mental health. Cognitive CBT is a psychotherapy approach that focuses on the connection between thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. It aims to identify and challenge negative thoughts patterns and beliefs while teaching practical coping skills to manage emotional distress for young people. CBT offers numerous benefits for mental health. Number one, effective for various issues. It has been shown to be effective in treating a range of mental health issues commonly experienced by young people, including anxiety disorders, depression, OCT, PTSD, uh, that is about post-traumatic you know, uh, uh, experience, and eating disorders. Now, you see, we are saying that cognitive, that's to do with their mind. When there is a change in your uh, uh, mental uh, thoughts, in your thinking, uh, I mean, I mean, in the, in, I mean, thinking healthy is going to help to cope with some of these things. Teaches coping skills. You know, CBT teaches coping skills. We can do more research on that to help our world. It keeps young people with practical coping strategies to manage stress, anxiety, and other emotional challenges. That's where, when I started, I said, everything that we call behavior today is picked from somewhere. It is learned. You know, before it is ingrained in our mind. And of course, the CBT is to say that, look, where it came in, you must walk in that direction so that when the mind is transformed according to the scriptures, now what is going to come out will be better and, of course, healthy for both the child and the society. These skills include relaxation techniques, problem solving skills, that they don't see problem as a mountain that cannot be surmounted. Now, how do you do this? How do you do that? And emotional regulation strategies. CBT and young people addressing negative thinking, you know, when they are thinking negatively, how do you address it? Promote behavioral change. Focus on changing behaviors that contribute to mental health issues. Then empowers independence. Empowers young people to take an active role in managing their mental health. Let them know that, look, it is, even for those of us that are adults, there are so many stress, a lot of things, you know, confronting us every day. But I want you to understand that, look, when you have not lost your mind, I congratulate you. When somebody loses his mind, you are now depressed and you have to leave, I mean, you know, begin to live on drugs. It becomes more challenging. And that's why when you can still reason, you can still think straight, you can change your mind. Whether you're having marriage prayers in your marriage, you're having challenges in your home, you have any challenges in your place of work, you must not lose your mind. You must take charge. You must understand that whatever comes my way shall surely come to pass. You know, shall surely come to pass. And uh, they just like a story of a particular in a church setting that was um, in a testimony time. Oh, this is a testimony. Everybody begin with testimony. And the, the pastor said, give testimony of the scripture that has affected your life. That when you find yourself at the crossroad, you quote that scripture and you pray about it, and that scripture will work for you. And everybody began to talk about scriptures. Ah, my God shall supply all my needs, and all those beautiful scriptures. One old man was in that service and raised up his hand. The Papa now said, Say, Papa, okay, let's have your own testimony. And the man began to weep. And he said, This Papa wants to spoil this uh, service today. He said, What is it? He said, Well, I have a scripture that has you know, blessed my life, and that anytime I find myself you know, in any situation, you know, that this scripture is everywhere. Before I open any page of the Bible, I will come across this scripture. And everybody began to wonder, what scripture could that be that you can see in almost all the chapters of the Bible? And the old man said, that scripture is, and it came to pass. And it came to pass. That is the power of revelation. It came to pass when Moses was going to a war, when Jesus was moved. It, it always comes, they said, Papa, what is the meaning of this scripture? He said, 
From that scripture, I learned that whatever comes along my way has not come to stay. It will surely come to pass. And I want to say this, that everything in life we call prayers, problems, they are on transit. But when they are coming your way, you don't allow it to wage down or to affect your mental health. You must take charge, empower independence, empower young people to take an active role in managing their mental health, prevent relapses. CBT provides young people with tools to prevent relapses and maintain long-term mental health. Even when they have to seek counselors and they have to be helped out, how they will not relapse and continue in the right direction. Tailored approach, short-term and goal-oriented, all this, uh, we can read the slide, improving coping with transitions. You see now, you know, the least saying it's a period of significant change and transitions. CBT helps young people to navigate these challenges by teaching adaptive coping skill and resilience, how to not give up, and of course, in building techniques, you know, to move forward, enhance self-awareness. It helps them to know who they are and how to cope uh, with uh, prayers of life. Faith-based intervention for mental health for young people. Of course, as uh, Christians, as uh, it is a Christian conference, faith-based support refers to the provision of emotional, spiritual, and practical assistance with a, within a religious or spiritual framework. It involves drawing on the beliefs, values, and practices of a particular faith tradition to offer guidance. Now, comfort and encouragement. Thank God for the scriptures. Thank God for the word of God. And of course, the word of God is always, that as I said, there is always a God's dimension, the scriptural dimension that can help, you know, uh, in all the psychological challenges. Sense of purpose, faith-based support can provide young people with a sense of purpose, community connection to participate. And of course, like uh, the Olive Camp that, um, uh, um, uh, what the, the, boot, the boot camp that comes up, and of course, which is coming, going to come up in, in August in some places in the country or maybe outside of the country. It is a place where we should encourage young people to go in order to be able uh, to, 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 to interact, you know, have a social support, reducing feelings of isolation and loneliness, then coping me mechanism, religious practice such as prayer, meditation in the, war, in the, in the word of God, you know, and scripture reading can serve as coping mechanism, you know, in that direction. Values and ethics. Let's lay it. What are the values and ethics? That is uh, when the Pastor Godalo was talking at that time. These are things that we are called, we call disciple. Values and ethics. Homes must have values and ethics that is guiding the home. Hope and optimism, or I'm sorry, and optimism, believe in a high power or divine plan can foster hope and optimism. We believe that there is no problem that cannot be solved. We encourage children, our young ones, that look, you are Christian. As we take them through the word of God, through the way of life, that look, you can overcome whatever comes your way. Rest, stress reduction, some of these things, practices, um, you know, it's uh, to bring, uh, you know, Bible quotes, you know, dancing, singing, and all those things. And of course, peer support, faith-based communities provide opportunities for young people to connect with their peers. And that's like uh, the boot camp that I talked about, or our church convention, faith-based intervention, continue guidance and mentorship, religious leader, you know, and mentors coping with trauma. How do they cope with trauma? You know, faith-based support can help young people process and cope with traumatic experiences by providing a framework for understanding suffering and finding healing through faith understanding that the word of God works, you know, and of course, renew their mind goes a long way for them to, uh, for faith to grow. Integration of mind and body and spirit, faith-based approaches the mental health, recognize the interconnectedness of mind, body, and spirit, offering holistic support that address the spiritual dimensions of well-being alongside of uh, psychological and emotional needs. Conclusion. In conclusion, uh, in this presentation, we have highlighted the importance and uh, how to ad address mental health issues among young people and the valuable role that various approaches, including cognitive behavioral therapy and faith-based support can play in promoting their well-being by recognizing the unique needs and challenges faced by young individuals and providing them with effective tools, resources, and support networks. We can empower them to navigate life's complexities with resilience, hope, and a renewed sense of purpose. 
Together, let us continue to advocate for the mental health of our youths and work collaboratively to create a more compassionate and inclusive society where everyone can try. Thank you for listening. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Moderator, can you hear me? Can I hear you? Thank you, sir. All right, that is it. Please, um, if there are questions, and of course, please take over from that point. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm true, please. Okay, sir. So some someone asked earlier, sir, if um the slides could be made available for for them after the um you know the meeting. I, I don't know or right now. Um, can the slides be made available, sir? Please go ahead. Okay, sir. All right, sir. I'll, so I'll drop the slides in the comments uh, in the chat box, um, so people can all right download it. Thank you, sir. If there are more comments, I mean more more questions, please let's go ahead and drop up um questions or you know just speak um into the microphone and doctor would be available to answer those questions. Please, can you make it louder so that I can hear you? Hello, I can't hear anybody speaking. All right, good. Good afternoon, sir. I don't uh, know if I should go I ahead. Please go ahead. I can hear you now. All right, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for the for the teaching. God bless you. You're so blessed. Um, but please, I have a question. And um I I happen to be the HOD of my church, children's church, and um to the glory of God. And but I have some set of children in that church that um I felt they are going through some emotional distress and um so that it go, it gets them more aggressive, even in church. Before you know it, they, they are ready to pick up fight at any point in time. They are ready to, to do all sorts of things. They are ready to cause distraction, cause anything at any point in time. Please. And uh, what it, we've been doing is um, pray and then talk to them and then show them some love. But how best do you feel we can handle this set of children that they'll be able to learn well in church, grow and um, in, in the knowledge and teaching of the word and um, and um, impact them more for them to become a better version of themselves. How best do you think we can agree about it, sir? Uh, okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, the first part is uh, the issue of praying that you have talked about. Uh, but like I said, you see, the, in the Christian you know, environment, we are missing some things out. Most of the time, 
prayer do can do all things. That is the truth. But we understand the place of counsel in the, in the Bible. The Bible says in multitude of counsels, purposes are established. In, in true counsel, you make your war. Yeah, you know, the counseling, true counsel, you know, uh, you know, I've seen so many scriptures regarding counseling. And uh, you'll, be, you'll be wondering how can somebody who is a music minister leave church after worship session to go and commit suicide? Or somebody come to church after service praying and all those prayers and he still go and hang himself. I see it happening both in Nigeria and in abroad. Now, you see, the problem there is that we don't engage people not to, when you are reprimanding a child, when he's doing what is wrong, ah, what you are doing is not right, you know, you don't behave, it's not good, don't, don't deal with that. You are only offering advice for what is happening for at the moment. But what is ingrained in the mind of that child or that uh, award, I mean, the teenager that is making such a child to behave that way, you are yet to get to the root. It is when we come from the counseling, you know, perspective, we, you know, when there is nothing, when the child is at his best at that particular time, when you got to offer him and say, look, be my guest, look, we want to talk today, uh, here, is, here is a drink for you, here is a snack for you, let's talk about you, let's talk about your home, let's talk about your school, let's talk about your friends, that is when you, that such a tiny relaxed atmosphere, you will see you as a friend you can confide in, that is when you can understand the root cause of what you are now seeing as a behavior. So I want to say that if we cannot handle that, let's look for counselors, you know, psychology, counseling psychology, you know, especially with a Christian, with a minister that can engage such a child. Of course, we have a lot of, um, uh, uh, you know, questions. I mean, what do you call it now? You know, we have a lot of uh, probing questions, you know, that can bring out uh, words from a person who even decide to keep quiet. There are so many ways to penetrate. And of course, we can also learn the, all this, you know, through attending of seminars that is centered on counseling, how to help young people. Like so what we are having today now, some of this knowledge can be passed on to them or can help us to approach things better. So I would say that the place of counseling, um, not your counseling, not advice, will go a long way to help such children. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Um, there are a few um, comments in the chat box, and I'm just going to go through them very quickly. If we have more questions or comments, it's fine to drop them in the chat box if we don't want to speak. If we want to, um, um, please let's just signify by raise of hand so that it's more orderly. I, I, I noticed um, quite a number of mics were um on while someone was trying to say something so let's signify by raise of hand okay so um uh, okay so for people who are asking for the presentation to be shared that has been done you can download from the chat box directly just click on it and you see download right um okay looking for more comments in the chat box okay a lot of thank you here sir uh thank you once again for the delivery sir for the for the lecture for the insightful one someone says thank you very much more grace more anointing more unction to function in jesus name thank you god bless you sir thank you um yes this person says um the presentation was detailed and well delivered we have to go and sit down and reread the lines for better understanding absolutely absolutely the slides have been made available and the recording would also be made available for us for our consumption um, for as many people who have attended, you get a link to watch online, um, as the case may be. Okay. Okay. So, again, for people asking for the slide, it's already here. Um, all the same, I held in to few things. Um, seeking support. Okay. Building resilience in children. Allowing them to talk. Giving them safe safe and conducive environment to talk and relate i believe these are points that this person picked from um the presentation that doctor just finished uh okay so there's a question here sir the person says sir how can one help someone with bipolar issues thank you um i'll allow you to take that sir, before i continue with some other comments in the chat box how can 
won't help someone with bipolar issues. Over to you, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Are you, are you there, sir? Uh, you are muted. You need to unmute, sir. I don't know if you've uh, started talking. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so the question is... Can how you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. All right. Um, like I said, we must understand that... Uh, some of these things, handling some of these things, we will do well if we can um, seek for counselors or counseling psychologists. Uh, we understand that, uh, uh, by, that bipolar disease, it is seen as a disease, and of course, of which there is when you are trying to uh, manifest two ident identity. When somebody is trying to, uh, you are trying to be what you are not. And of course, it can be also a temporary reaction to frustration of pain. It could be a more serious condition. And this is what we refer to bipolar disorder. When someone is manifesting, you know, two you begin to say, ah, this person is not behaving. Why is he not behaving like this? Now, of course, everything still boils out to what I call counseling. Now, when you are able to relate, if you don't understand who a person is, you cannot help that person. If you don't listen to somebody's story, you tend to judge that person. And it is only when you understand where someone is coming from, then you will be able to put down your name and create time. But you see, counseling takes time. It's not a quick fix thing. And so if you want to have a therapy, you know what I mean, to hear all the therapy, it's not a quick fix thing. It must be a continuous thing until such a person gets to the root of the matter and the problem is solved. So I will say that please seek for the help of a counseling psychologist who is a Christian. So the place of prayer is good, but at the other time, getting to the root of the matter, how to help such a child manifesting uh, a dual identity. That is the way to go through counseling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, I believe that answers the question for the person who asked. Um, I'll go through a few more um, comments we have in the chat box. Um, like it was said earlier, if we have any more questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat box um, even as we round off this um, um, this session, this uh, breakout room. Okay, um, someone has also said that, uh, uh, God bless you, sir, for this comprehensive but simple presentation. It really strength, it has really strengthened some of the thoughts have been nurturing, amazing, amazing. Helping children trust God in whatever they are passing through. Mm. We should engage a child, not only correct, amazing. That's one of the things that doctor said. Um, thank you from Olua Bumi. She says, thank you, sir. Um, Agbola says, I believe parents should be engaged in church about their children. A PTA meeting in church. Absolutely. Totally agree to this. Um, once again, if we have questions, um, we still have a few time, a few, few, few more minutes left. Um, for this breakout session in this particular room, let us drop the questions. Or if there is something we think um, would like Doctor to go over again, you know, clarify on, um, shed more light light upon. Please let's let's use this opportunity to uh, mention them so that he can take his time to to speak to those things. Um, okay, so Doctor is sharing his screen again with us so we can you know, check through. And I mean, for, I believe most people have already downloaded the slides on their devices. So you can go through the slide. Uh, uh, like like we see, sometimes we, we think we, we've heard it all, but the truth is we didn't hear it all. So 
Uh, that's why it, it, it is important that as we send the recording of this breakout to us, we take our time to listen over again. Um, we take our time to go through the slides again and uh, we'll be better off for it. Uh, and uh, maybe maybe we also want to ask doctor if people, all right, if I get to that, I think we have a question. We have a question. Um, how do I navigate pressure when you are trying to build a relationship with a teenager? Absolutely. Amazing question. Um, Dr. Sir, we have a question. How? All right. How to navigate? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud and clear, sir. All right. How to navigate prayer where you are trying to build relationship with uh, a teenager? All right. Let me believe that it is even prayer from the person who wants to help a teenager. There are prayer from two sides. The person who wants to help a teenager that person also is trying to cope with his own prayer, with stress. But you see, if you want to help a person, it's just like what we say in, in the workplace. We tell somebody when you are in your workplace, forget your, put your problems back at home. You don't bring your problem to the workplace because it may lead to sack or query. So the same thing, we are all under prayer. We are all coping with prayers. We are all stressed in one way or the other. Degree of stress or prayer may differ. But we are saying that it must not infringe, infringe, infringe on our mental health or infringe on our mind so that we are able to uh, still have, uh, uh, you know, be able to uh, comport ourselves. So when you comport yourself and you now want to help a teenager, your own prayer, you have. Uh, try to put it aside, your own prayer. And of course, you want to give that child a listening ear. Elizabeth, because what he wants to discuss with you also is to uh, release his own prayers. Some of the things affecting him or her is what he wants to tell you. But it's not, yeah, you can imagine somebody saying that, ah, everybody is facing it. Oh, ah, eh? Even if yeah, you are talking about your own, even my own is time 10 of yours. And that's such a child who think that, wait, well, there is, there is no hope, but it is true that everybody is passing through it. That is why you must come from uh, a more knowledgeable handle, I'm sorry, angle to help such a child. So you want to listen to the prayer or the stress confronting to a child. As a teacher, as a counselor, you must have to manage your own prayer so that it will not lead to outbursts. It won't lead you to you judging such a child. Uh, is that why you are you are you are behaving that way? Is that why you are doing so so and so and so? so? You're already judging that child, and of course, uh, that that's the last you are going to hear, you know, you know, from him or from her. So that is how we must manage, you know. That is why we talk about, um, you know, managing our own emotion, you know, so that we'll be able to help people also to cope with their own emotions. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, there's another hand raised. I'm going to ask um, the participant to unmute now so she can ask her question or give her contribution. Thank you, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you, sir. The, the, the teaching was quite an impactful and I hope now simple to understand. But um, my question, or probably a contribution, let me see, is um, most times parents or teachers, they don't know who or where to go to get help. Because in this part of the country, we believe that a child that is now seeing maybe a counselor or a psychologist is as if he has a mental problem. So my, my question is, is there where we can go, like um, um, an avenue where one can talk to somebody to speak to a child? You mentioned something earlier that um, we can organize a counseling session for parents in churches. Now, I am thinking of that, but where do I go? How do I go about it? Who do I meet? Because really, you need to get um, information on where to go and how to go about it. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Oh, uh, thank you very much, Ma. Um, 
Yeah, I know that that is the society. That's why I was quoting Harry the other time, that everybody has mental challenge. We always, that is what people call, what people call prayer. Um, what can lead to, when it leads to depression, and that person now begin to go from counseling to medical attention, all right? That is when it becomes uh, 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 more challenging. But um, when somebody is still having, be able to listen to people, you have your mind that can still listen to people, that is where the counseling psychologists or uh, therapists will come in. Now, that is that. So I know our society, by the time your child, uh, you can even come, you know, you begin to say, ah, maybe that child is having so, so, and so, and so. But uh, counseling itself is, is confidential. For example, if you see a counselor that wants to help out, the details of your child, must, of that child or that word must be kept, you know, uh, secrets must be kept confidential. So um, what I would just say is that this is a conference. Um, by the time the facilitators, if they want, um, uh, I run a counseling, uh, you know, outfit called Bright Minds Counseling, a mediation center, Bright Mind Counseling. And of course, um, I have a lot of therapists that are also working along with me, uh, like the camp of uh, the Olive Tender. I've, sent people there to, I mean, I've been there, one, I mean, myself with a team, you know, of other can counseling psychologists. And there's another time that I've sent, you know, people that I have to send people that can, you know, uh, there to go and help out in such a camp. So um, I would say that I, uh, I wouldn't want to give my number out, but let the uh, organizer of this conference, when they think it necessary, all right, to for further uh, contacts. That's why we said um, counseling, there is a referrer, all right? If you want to refer, I believe that um, I'll be graciously available to assist. So it is when we have a group counseling, we identify some things, we can now, you know, there are ways to even uh, to assess, you know, the children. When we now begin to see some things that need help, we can now, you know, see how with the permission of their parents, Please, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can. Yeah. Uh, the person who has that question, with the permission of their parents, if you are a teacher in the school and you recall, you discover that this is some, this and that, invite the parent and say, this and this and this. I think your, ch your child or your ward may need to see a counselor. You know, may need a counselor. Maybe in our conference, we discover this. Maybe he has to see a counselor. The parent may decide, to take such a person to a counseling psychologist, or you can say that, please, can you recommend, you know, somebody who could be your help in that direction? Then there are a lot of people that are not just a secular psychologist, counseling psychologist, but who are also Christians, who will be able to deliver uh, on that note. I don't know whether I've answered your question. Um, have I answered your question, ma? Hello? Mrs. Agbola, I hope I've answered your question. Okay, it's smooth. Uh, I'm All right, going, it's I'm smooth. To enable, okay, I think she has answered in the chat box. She said yes, sir. Um, All right, okay. okay. So, thank, thank you so you. much, sir. Thank you very much. Um, so just like um, doctor has mentioned, if um, you want to get in touch with him, I was actually going to get to that earlier. If you want to get in touch with him, um, it's okay to reach out to us and... Uh, would be glad to do the introductions. Um, I mean, um, I mean, at least for for people who are attending this conference, who are attending this breakout session, reach out to us and um, would link you up with doctor. Um, you can reach us by um, as a matter of fact, in filling the break the the feedback form, you can include in um, part of the extra comments that we have asked for uh, to be connected to doctor. Francis Adeshola, and we're going to do that. Or you reach out to any of the numbers that, you know, has been um, um, reaching out to you, that has been sending messages to you or calling over the past few, um, over the past few weeks before the conference. Um, also, I want to just um, elaborate on what something Dr. Um, spoke about 
he mentioned this during his presentation and he has also mentioned it just now about a camp that we organize at um, Olive Tenders, right? That's the name of the ministry, Olive Tenders. It's the Salt and Light Camp. It's for teenagers, specifically for them. And the whole point of Salt and Light Camp is to help teenagers, you know, grow um, spiritually, grow physically, grow mentally, and to become a whole and um, complete um um, humans as they grow into what God has ordained for them to be. It's a seven-day camp um, and it's residential. It's going to hold again this year. Um, we are very particular about um, what our teenagers consume as far as um, what they hear and the people they interact with are concerned. And that's why we've created an atmosphere where teenagers can come together, you know, meet other God lovers, interact with the things of God and get better even on their journey to being adults. So, um, I mean, it's open to everybody. Um, doctor has been on camp to minister to our teenagers before. Uh, we've had other um, amazing people, um, anointed people, uh, professionals who have also been on camp to, you know, show our teenagers what um, the future looks like for them, even as they follow through um, in the ways of God. Okay. Uh, having said that, if we have more questions or more comments that we want to, you know, um, talk about. We still have some minutes in this breakout room. Uh, kindly let us go to the chat box or you know just signify use the reaction um, icon, and I'm going to enable us to unmute our mics, and we'll be able to you know speak as to what we have in our minds. Okay, I'm still waiting for us to to say something before we disperse. Or if there are questions we want to specifically ask. Okay, you didn't get no no, I was just speaking generally now. If we have more comments, I explained um what sort and light camp is all about. I said doctor had referenced it a couple of times while he was speaking, and I said it's an atmosphere created for teenagers around the city of Yubado and in Abuja. It is organized once in a year by our ministry. Um, so it is interdenominational. It's for teenagers all around, where they come together and interact with other God lovers, and they grow spiritually, grow mentally. You know, just an atmosphere for them uh, to become better people. Uh, that's what I said, Ma. And I also said if we have more comments or more questions that I would like to ask um, doctor before he leaves, we can do that now. Okay, so um, Ibukun Lua, please, I didn't register for, for this conference. I'd like to drop my email address for access to materials. All right, your email address would be noted now and would ensure that you get access to the materials from the conference. Thank you. Okay, if there are more people in that category, kindly drop your details and um, we'll work on getting the materials across to you. So because we also understand there are people here who, you know, okay, so I can see another comment. Um, all right, the breakout session actually closes soon. Okay, so I was saying that um, there are people here who probably... Um, didn't re register for the conference, but uh, somehow you, okay, somehow you are on this meeting. It's okay for you to drop your um, email somewhere and um, would, would notice and get the materials across to you. All right, Ma, you have been given permission to unmute. Thank you, sir. Um, I just want to speak about salt and light. My children... I think they attended 2017, and it's a very beautiful conference. In fact, I talk about thought and light to a lot of people. And many times, people even bring their children to me so that I can, I'll be the one that will take their children. Sometimes my car cannot take those children, and they go by themselves. And in fact, last year, my children couldn't go because they were out of town, and people were like, are we going? And I said, no, but this year, at least the one in that age bracket will be coming. Salt and Light is a very beautiful conference. It taught my daughter, my first child, a lot, and it has impacted her. 
Then going to the issue of um, mental health. I joined this um, group, this um, room, because of um, I believe that that's the first stage in a child's life. When the child's um, mental health is balanced, I think a lot of things will be balanced. And um, I believe that uh, the impact doctor has made is, um, is a beautiful one. Uh, and I want to thank the organizers and even doctor himself. And um, I believe that um, over time, if we keep on with this discussion, it will go a long way in helping parents and children alike, even teachers. Then what I want to say is that many times, teachers are not counselors. They are just teachers. But a lot of times we want to do the job of a counselor where we cannot um, handle a case. We should refer. But most times we don't want to refer. Like I always say, even pastors are not counselors. They are pastors. There are cases they cannot handle. We need a professional to handle it. I just pray that God will help us. And with this discussion going on, I believe it will get better. I really enjoyed myself. It's a beautiful one. I've been well impacted. Thank you, sirs. Thank you very much. Let, can I make a comment before you round up, sir? Absolutely, sir. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Bola. You have nailed it on the head. Um, pastors, many pastors parade themselves as counselors. And that is not the truth. Whatever made me as uh, a minister of the gospel, I left school many, many years ago. You know, then I went back after going to theological school for three years for other training outside the country, then went back to start from the beginning to the end, study counseling is because I know that um, a lot of deficits exist in Christendom. Pastors tell people what they want them to do. Counselors don't tell people what they want them to do. You know, you listen, people don't listen to your story before they begin to offer solution. That is not in counseling. Anybody that cannot sit down listening to a client speaking one hour, telling the story of his life, has no business in counseling. So, and that is why I will say that you see many people in the church, they will do prayers and 